By now you know I try to make these videos in sort of a, um, a natural way, for lack of a better word, warts and all, uh, just so, you know, you have a feeling for what I do, uh, collecting and guns and the realities of just going out and shooting. So uh, I'm not sure exactly why I'm explaining that, but sometimes there are comments and, you know, maybe there could be all kinds of fancier stuff happening, but that's kind of just not in my nature. So <clears throat> we're taking a look at a really, really interesting combination of carbine and cartridges. So if you buy cartridges at, a, at an auction and I bid on these, these are 577 Snyder. This wrapping looks uh, quite, in a way, too good to me. It's got string on it, but it could be that it was in an arsenal somewhere. I don't know. Or maybe somebody made new wrapping, but it doesn't matter because the cartridges, I do believe, are authentic. So if you go to an auction, you know, you get a box like this and, and the cartridges are the original rolled black brass 577s. So I shot five or six others, but they were different. This, this is the original coiled brass. And you can see it's in a way, a, some would say primitive way of having a gas tight container for the powder, but it doesn't matter because, well, this one we just fired and uh, it, it fired no issues. I mean, if, if it's true that it's 1890 and I'm assuming it is, uh, these cartridges have waited a long time uh, through, you know, world wars to be fired. Some people would say, don't shoot them, but I thought for the sake of education and so people can see something maybe they don't see every day, um, we'll take a few shots. So I've got three in hand. I'll just set this box down. So it doesn't look like much, does it? But it's, um, it's, a, it's a significant find. And what do we have to shoot? Uh, we have a 577 Snyder. You know how much I like these actions. You can see the, that's a significant cartridge. This carbine has this kind of, what I would call a door handle front sight. It's maybe hard to see. It looks like a doorknob, uh, but actually it's not too bad. And then a pretty elaborate um, ladder rear sight. Um, I can imagine that you would need the ladder to get the elevation you need with these big, slow rounds, but I've never used the ladder. I just used the low sight. And then the action is the same. And somewhere on here, um, well, you can, I don't know if we can focus in, but on the, on the side lock, 18, 1898 Enfield. Um, again, it's, it's really old, but it's, it's a wonderful firearm. And it, it, like I said, we just fired it. Everything works. Um, as for loading, so pretty straightforward. You drop it in and, um, feed it down. You have to make sure that the rim is, you know, flush with the breech face, which it is. And then you can close the, the locking block. Uh, so, I mean, and actually we're ready to fire. Not sure that's the right sequence. Uh, probably not, but we could set this down. And I don't think this is entirely safe either, but it could be, you could let me know all the Snyder experts. Um, if we impacted this, it might fire. So let's see. I mean, it's always a question with these really old rounds, whether they fire. I'll try to shoot that plate, but I truly don't know uh, where to aim, or I'm, I'm hoping that since the carbine is so old and the ammo is so old, maybe it's the right ammo for the right, you know, rifling and everything. But let's see what happens. So that's, um, 
a very clean miss. I have no idea where that bullet went. And then to um, unload, we've got the half cock, which I guess we could have used before, and then flip it open and then move the block backwards. And you, you notice that there was no, well, maybe you didn't, uh, but there was no gas leakage. As primitive as they may look, um, the round worked well. Uh, gee, it's too bad that I didn't see some, some gravel lifting or something. Uh, but I didn't see anything under the plate, so I'm assuming that maybe I shot over. So I'll hold really low. Just would be cool to, to hit that plate. So I've got it on half cock, which is probably safer, and then full cock now. Okay, so, um, gee, I wonder if that's black powder. Anyway, uh, I think, I think I have a clue now what's happening because I saw those, I saw those ferns move. Uh, I tried to take my eyes off the site, you know, um, as I fired. So I'm gonna aim about three feet. Uh, that's one nice thing about heavy bullets. You give it a little tap and they almost chamber themselves. All right, so let's try way under and see what happens. Well, there, you saw it now. If you, if you, there was a, so th I, that's three feet under and it's still too high. So let's keep going. And have you noticed it's 1890 until today? And these, these are all firing. It, to me, that's, I mean, it's pretty amazing. Try again. I tend to pull the hammer back to full cock. I have to train myself to go to half cock. And that brass is, is excellent. We'll fire a couple more. It's not critical to hit that plate, but, but I'm an optimist. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll hit something. So a bit of a hang fire on that one. Um, I pulled the muzzle down, some kind of flinch happening there, and then it fired. So that was a that was a miss. And we might go back to this, but I think I'll make this the last round. I wonder whether I shouldn't shoot sideways. Then you can see the rather than wasting rounds. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll just shoot into the hill. You know, at a at a rock or something, and um, there's no danger of ricochet, but then you'll see the kind of the plume and everything. Maybe we'll take more than one shot. So we made a big crater about, about two feet from above where I was shooting. That was a bit of a delayed fire. Yeah, let's take a couple more shots. Kind of on a roll here. Yeah, so this puppy is really shooting high. Um, I'll have to, I'll have to do something about that. But you can see how easy it is to operate these. I mean, this is a dream compared to muzzle loading. I wonder if I have one more loose round. 
Yeah, I've got one more loose round. So that is, uh, there's a difference between the hill and, and the plate. Um, well, all right, I'll try one more time at that plate. no cigars. That's okay. <laughs> we'll keep at it. I got a lot of ammo there, but um, maybe I'll save some. Anyway, I, I've said this before in another video, but whenever I shoot something this old, barrel's quite warm. I find that with some of the, the cordite and those old powders that heat up. Um, yeah, I mean, these, these rounds were, like I said, wading through all of those historic events, where, wherever they were, I don't know, but here they are today. Um, and we're using them up. So in some ways you feel bad, but I think it's worth it. All right, well, thank you for watching. And oh, I, I didn't say enough about the carbine. Um, yeah, I mean, if you can get one of these, you know, you can shoot all day long with a modern rifle with a scope and you're obviously gonna hit everything. But these have true character. And you know what we'll do is uh, we'll regroup and I have some other ammo and maybe I'll be smarter about hitting that gong and maybe we'll come back to it, maybe we won't. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and uh, sharing this fantastic Snyder carbine. Not, oh, and somebody's gonna write me that I've got a clean um, the bore, and of course I will, because I'm assuming it's probably going to get rusty if I don't. All right, take care out there. We'll see you next time. We walked down the hill and decided to take uh, two more shots and, and see if we can get that plate. Still way over. I think I maybe heard something, but it could be my, the voices. Anyhow, all right, well, We'll stop there. Thanks a lot.